so this is the one minute warning. In one minute, we're gonna set off on part two of the Petra Kuchas. For those of you who have not been here for half the morning, the Petra Kucha is a 20 slide presentation. The slides are up for 20 seconds each. The presenters have had to learn how to use a Petra Kucha because it's not a format that they were familiar with. Um, we have five people presenting their solution to permeable waterproof membranes. Um, starting with per Pertex, uh, who are using a hydrophilic mainly based system, their shield, which is doing a lot better than most people realize. Dimpora have actually solved how to make microporous membranes without using PFAS chemicals. By the way, for those of you who are nerds and know about uh, PFCs, I found out last night there are about 14,000 different PFC compounds, which is why we call them a general group, or the forever chemicals. Any of you who have watched the movie um, Dark Waters, that's all about the dodgy chemicals and why we're moving away. Followed by Expor, which is a BenQ production. Followed by Amphico. Amphico are using a poly, polyethane, which is part of the polypropylene category. They won the ISPO brand new award in November here. And finally, we have Sympatex. Sympatex is the brand name most associated with hydrophilic membranes. So, rather a long session, Charles talking too much. We're gonna host questions, preferably virtual questions, at the end of all five of them presenting. So, the first one off, Andy from Pertex, it's all yours. Thank you very much, Charles, and thanks to Performers Days for having us along here. Um, as Charles said, I'm Andy from Pertex, and I hope you're not um, bored of water breathable fabrics yet, because we've got a lot more to go. So I thought I'd give a, a brief introduction to who, who Pertex is and where we've come from. Many of you may know, but some of you won't understand. Um, so Pertex is over 40 years old, and it started as a concept of a, a capillary reaction fabric came up with by Hamish Hamilton. Um, he took his concept to a mill in Lancashire, um, in Paddyham, called Perseverance Mills. Um, and at the time, Perseverance Mills were specialized in parachute canopy fabrics. Um, and they, they took their, their expertise, which was high-density weaving and precise heat calendaring, and combined it with Hamish's concept. Um, and that was the inception of Pertex, as we know it today. Um, so that was the the inception of Pertex, that the pioneering spirit behind Pertex is based on um, creating light, lightweight downproof fabrics. And um, so we work with partners um, to create mainly down, downproof apparel, sleeping bags um, for expeditions um, and really focusing on that lightweight. And the evolution of this was to create um, lightweight face fabrics for water breathable applications. It was a natural evolution. Um, but really we are an outdoor brand. We, we make fabrics for outdoor people. Um, we are outdoor people, and part of that is, is understanding our increased responsibility to protect these outdoor spaces, which we all love and enjoy. Um, so we're a sustaining member of IOCA, um, but really responsibility is at the heart of, of what, we, what we look to do. And, and leading on from that is, is um, we're responsible for, for eliminating these PFAS substances. Um, we understand that they, they provide unique um, surface properties, um, but We've heard from many people now that they are um, very persistent and mobile and, and they, they have to be eliminated. Um, so due to that, um, we go on to our waterproof breathable fabrics. And, and really, when we talk about these fabrics, we're talking about them providing two main objectives. They're, they're providing a barrier to wind and rain, whilst also um, allowing uh, moisture to, to permeate through the fabric to keep the user comfortable. These are two things on their own, very easy to do, but together become very difficult. So really, the, the first line of defense is the DWR. And I think uh, Mark has mentioned in the session before just how important the DWR is for water breathable fabrics. Um, once the fabric on the outside of the, of the garment wets out, then the breathable performance drops dramatically. So really, that's the first line of, of, um, of defense against um, water ingress. And this has been the main focus until relatively recently of where PFAS are used. And we know that without using PFAS chemicals, DWRs, can't provide the same level of oil resistance and stain resistance. 
but um, state-of-the-art PFAS free water propellant finishes can provide a similar level of protection. So moving on to the membrane, the membrane is, is the primary barrier to water. In my, there's, there's two main categories, so microporous and hydrophilic as we discussed. Uh, microporous uh, membranes really rely on these PFAS substances to avoid contamination, whereas hydrophilic membranes do not have these pores and they don't face the same problem. So that leads on to our Pertex Shield. This is our, our water breathable fabric category. And each of these fabrics is designed with a specific application in mind. Um, we work with our partners to develop these fabrics for their um, specific product applications. Um, so these are, these are um, waterproof breathable fabrics. And we start with where our, our, our real expertise lies, and that's weaving the face fabric. So our face fabrics use um, unique uh, yarn technologies and unique materials. So we've got um, recycled options, bio-based options, and also um, innovative yarns like our non-circular cross-section yarns. This is the basis of our waterproof breathable shield fabrics. And we combine that with a hydrophilic membrane, so that the membrane provides incredible waterproof protection. It is hydrophilic and, and monolithic, so there's a, a solid layer which provides a, the, the water and wind proofness, and, but it breathes dynamically, so higher humidities, you get um, more breathability. So the harder you work, the harder the membrane works. And then there's uh, multiple different construction options, um, so two, two and a half and three layer options with um, super light jersey backers, dry touch finishes for the two and a half layer options. And this is where we, we, we work with our partners to develop fabrics for their specific applications. So where, where a three layer op option might work for one, a two and a half layer for a really packable option. And that leads on to our Revolve. So Revolve is a collection of shield fabrics based around fabrics for a circular future. These are monomaterial fabrics made entirely from recycled polyester. Recycled polyester face, recycled polyester hydrophilic membrane, and a recycled polybacker. So really, the, these fabrics are designed to be recycled at the end of their life. So the, the, there's no sacrifice on performance or durability. That is a, a key, key thing when we developed these fabrics is that they weren't um, a, a down, downgrading performance. They were, they were just as performance um, specific as our other fabrics. Um, so we, we had to work on creating new polyester face fabrics specifically for these. And then on from that, um, we have to think about the end of life of these. So we've worked with uh, recycling partners um, one specific example is we work with Ambercycle in the United States um, to make sure that our fabrics are compatible with the developing um, chemical recycling systems um, to ensure there's no barriers to recycling. And that brings on to our um, endurance DWR technology. So uh, as we've said, PFAS-free DWRs traditionally haven't been able to be very durable. This is a real step change in the durability of PFAS-free DWRs. And it's a finish that actually coats the filaments of the yarn, providing incredible durable finish to both washing and wearing. Um, and I just wanted to finish up on really quickly on garment care. We, we have to understand that the that, that, that PFAS-free fabrics um, are, are different to those that came before. And we have to educate the consumer that, they, that the caring for these fabrics has got to be different. Washing, reproofing, etc., is a really key aspect of this, and we need to have that conversation with the consumer. Um, so thank you very much for, for your time. And I'm Andy over at Pertex. If you want to ask any more questions, come and see me. Can we show appreciation for Andy? Um, if you don't know where Pertex are, they're over that direction towards the back wall. So we're going to swap over now, and we're going to have Mario from Dimpora. Dimpora are the ones who are using science, where everyone says you can't create microporous in this way. Dimpora has solved. So six minutes worth, off you go. Thank you, Charles. Welcome, everyone. My name is Mario. I'm CEO and co-founder of Dimpora. I started this journey 10 years ago, actually March 13, with my master thesis. I started the world of designing, developing, and now marketing microporous membranes without ever touching a fluorinated molecule. And I mean, yeah, it's brainwashing. You've heard it 7,000 times now. We have to get rid of the fluorinated chemistry, um, but also we have to go towards uh, lower impact membranes, lower impact materials in our garments, in all of our lives, but especially also in high performance garments. And we have to look into circularity. We at Timpora have the solution. We have a technology that allows us to create membranes and we actually have the process for the membranes, all the rest we have to combine with that are fluorine free, that have a low impact on nature, and that in the future are circular as well. 
That's when we started. We started with four technologies on the market. You all know them, different versions. We've heard of them before. Amazing to look at from a chemical engineering perspective how people made membranes work before we started. And nowadays, we're there with Timpora, with then after my PhD, the first uh, products out, now the first products with customers on the market. Our patented process looks like this. We start with little rocks that we put into polymers. I don't specify the polymer yet because they're interchangeable. We then make a film out of them and then we remove the rocks from the polymeric film and open up a porous system. This ready-made membrane in the end then laminated into laminates. This is what it looks like when the rocks are still in there and we already made the film. That's a membrane that is not yet porous. It's a solid composite and the polymer is all around it. And then when it changes and we wash out the particles, we can actually see that we open the pores. So now we have an open pore system um, that your body can breathe through, that is breathable, that is permeable, but the pores are designed in a way, and that's the part of the science, that without PFAS, you're not having the water enter uh, at a certain level of waterproofing from, let's say, 2,000 to 25,000 millimeters of water column. That's our first product on the market, Timpora EcoPure. It's a traditional thermoplastic polyurethane. Um, falls within the supply chain. As a young company, it's quite important that you're able to do that. Uh, the performance parameters we have, we can provide here. As I just told you, we can play with them. If you want to discuss standards at our booth, we can do that. Most importantly, we do it without any solvents. Um, we, with this, based on our internal LCA, so internal, not third party certified, um, we reduce 96% of the CO2 equivalents in that process by creating microporous TPU with our process. Our second product that we recently launched is uh, based on a PP material, so we get closer to this recyclability. Um, also here, regarding the discussion before, showing recyclability, a big topic. We're still working on that one as well. Waterproofing is higher due to the naturality of polypropylene and breathability still at very high levels. But we cannot and we will not stop there. Our Technology is a big playground. We have different versions of opportunities to go still into. Some of them we're pushing ourselves. Some of them we're looking for partners to push together. And I will discuss them individually so you understand what we are looking at in these categories. We start with the bio-based versions. Bio-based materials come from nature. They are there in different versions. We see them all around us uh, from very low loading of bio-based materials to very high loading of bio-based materials. What they allow us is to start circularity from nature up, and then in the end, once you burn it, you at least took it from nature. With this, if we replace our materials from not bio-based, oil-based, fossil-based, into bio-based, we reduce another 88% of our CO2 equivalents. Again, internal LCA. And so bio-based has to be one of the stepping stones into a circular future within membranes and also fabrics. Then we have monomateriality goes along with all our membranes. If we use a material that is already used in a fabric and make a membrane out of it, combine them into these monomaterials mono that have been mentioned many times before, the access to recyclability or reusing these materials in the supply chain is much, much better, and that's with our technology possible. Biodegradability, <laughs> the probably most complicated one of these opportunities. We focus on the shedding of microplastics and micropollution um, but biodegradability and durability of our high-performance garments are currently still in a discussion. So how long does it have to last? When does it have to degrade? We are careful with that and looking into the opportunities there. 3D membranes, due to our, uh, the composite you saw with the rocks inside, we can create pieces like this. We can create microporous membranes in one piece. We don't need a seam and we don't need a seam tape. This is something we're looking for partners to work on with um, to create socks gloves, or also full jackets. Now a little case study on a successful product we did together with Snow Life. Um, we is the way we work usually with our partners. We are a young company. We don't have the huge uh, volumes yet. So we start with you. We test on small scale. We test on medium scale. We make prototypes with you. So you get comfortable with our technology. You get the feeling of it. You can test it with your, garment, uh, with your athletes. And in the end, you create an award-winning product, such as the glove we made with Snow Life. We also support you in the marketing, so our story is a story to be told, it's a story to be brought to the consumer, and actually so people know what kind of science they enjoy when they wear the garment with the Impora inside. 
And this is what you can do and experience at our booth, B18, if you come by. Um, you will have a choice of different laminates we already did with us. You can also work with our membrane and choose your own uh, fabrics and create your laminates. We also have the option for smaller designers uh, or smaller brands to go up to the garment level with you. And as I said, the, third one, uh, the fourth one is to create specific materials for your longer term future. So thanks a lot for your attention and happy to talk to you at the booth. Mario, that was great. Um, the next one up, can I pass it on to Henry from BenQ? But he's going to talk about their membrane export. So Mark Taylor's doing the clicker. Um, Mark, can we have the first slide up, please? Wherever Mark Taylor is. Nope. There we go. Not the first slide. Okay. Can we go back to the, f to the first slide? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so starting from now, Mark Taylor is going to be pressing every 20 seconds. Take it away, Henry. Okay, hi everyone. I'm uh, Henry from BenQ Materials, and I will introduce a new product today. BenQ Materials is a part of the BenQ Group in Taiwan. BenQ is a leader in uh, material engineering, expert in materials science and uh, polymer product. And BenQ Materials is famous for creating and producing high-tech Product film for TV, touchscreen display, medical care product, battery separator films, and uh, that technology that leads us to Xpore. Xpore is a total solution for performance textile uh, that includes uh, membrane production, glue production, lamination, merci. <laughs> lamination and seam sealing tapes. Um, everything is engineered and produced in-house by uh, BenQ Materials, so there is no subcontracting. The core of the Expo is BenQ Materials nanoporous membrane, so nanoporous, pore size is nano, 100 nanometers, sorry. Very small pores, this allows us to have a very high pore density for a true breathability and no compromise. So we have a lot of pores, but uh, uh, that's great for performance, sorry, but the most important is that our uh, product is uh, PFC uh, free, so no uh, PFC here. It's made of PP polyolefin material. So PFC free, but also solvent free, meaning that we do not use solvent to create the pores. In fact, this is thermal expansion, so we pull the film to create the pores. There is no chemical involved. So PFC free, solvent free, but also we do not release harmful substance in the atmosphere, but we still uh, produce some CO2 because we need energy. So by 2024, 100% of the full process will be powered by our own uh, solar panels. So we do everything by ourselves and the membrane production, solvent-free glue, uh, the lamination, of course, everything under our control and done by uh, BenQ materials. So there's, again, no subcontracting. Everything in-house except the textile because we are not weaver, not knitters. And for this part, we we'll rely on uh, certified partners in Taiwan uh, that have all the required certification to produce high quality fabrics. And uh, talking about quality, we are an electronic company, so we follow electronic standards. That's very high standards. The product we deliver are tested from raw material to finished goods. Uh, basically, we test uh, everything. So we control everything, but doesn't mean we are not uh, flexible because the solution, we, with this solution, we can engineer um, many different uh, product and customized product, but we will always do it uh, with uh, sustainability in mind. With the Expo solution, we can laminate everything, all kind of fabric, woven, knits, uh, non-woven, whatever the material is, uh, synthetic, artificial, or Natural fibers, basically, no limitations. 
So up to now, Expo provided three layer fabric, but today we are introducing a 2.5 layer. And uh, the name is Agile. Agile membrane. Uh, the three layer was protected with a backer, but for the 2.5, we prov uh, protect the membrane with a solvent-free and PFC-free coated layer. Agile membrane is based on the export nanoporous uh, with the same property. So that means PFC free, solvent free, true breathability and waterproofness, but uh, of course it's much lighter. Agile can be very light. The membrane itself is around six grams per square meter. The protective layer only five. And the glue 10 to 15 grams per square meter so it's around 25 total. So if you select a 10D shell, let's say you have a 2.5 below 50 gram per square meter. Now, coming to breathability, uh, as we said before, we have a lot of small pores. And with Agile, you get a RET below 6, uh, A1 around 7K, and uh, B1 around 30K. So that's Okay performance, I would say great performance for a 50 gram per square meter, 2.5 layer. Uh, the Agile is perfect for active sports that requires lightness and uh, protection. It's always a trade-off um, between waterproofness and breathability, and we think that uh, Agile offer a, a very good compromise. You can use Agile for active, but uh, we laminate uh, onto anything. So Agile is also great for everyday use. I mean, urban or city, for biking, rain jacket. The figures for the waterproofness is 15K ISO. So Agile is no exception compared to uh, other BenQ material product. Uh, the focus of the company is sustainability and sustainability is also durability. Uh, the agile structure is very durable and start to slowly degrade only after eight to ten years. Yeah. So this is our uh, agile membrane uh, from BenQ Materials. It's uh, PFC free, solvent free, offer great performance, light, long lasting, and we can customize everything according to your needs. So if you want to know more, come see us at CO7. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Henry, that was brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, now, the next project is Amphico. Amphico are the people. Um, I'm a bit proud of them because they're in an RCA uh, incubator. That's my school that I teach at. They won the ISPO brand new award just a couple of months ago. So, Jun, take it away. Hello, my name is John Kamei. I am the CEO of Amphico. Uh, we are based in the UK in London, and we are a deep tech material science company. So today I'm here to share about our newest innovation, which is called Amphitex. And uh, it is a technology which is 100% uh, waterproof, permeable, but at the same time we've taken rid of way of uh, PFASs and at the same time design the textile to be for circularity. But before I go into the detail, I think it's worth sharing why I'm doing that and then why I'm here to share my story with you. So I'm gonna dive in into why I'm doing this one. So I'm a material scientist originally from Japan um, and just like many of you, I've enjoyed many weekends going up the hills or swimming in those beautiful oceans. And during my um, work days, I would look at, at that same nature get inspiration from animals, insects, plants, you know, to invent new liquid repellent materials. So that was the thing that I was been doing for more than 10 years. So I would take inspiration from fish scale to make oil repellent surfaces for healthcare equipment, or I would look at the slippery surfaces of these carnivorous plants in order to make new coating technology for the automobile industry. And I have like many inventions together uh, with uh, the largest material science company in uh, Japan. But exactly 12 years ago, uh, a huge earthquake and tsunami hit my uh, town that I was. And it made me think that I wanted to use my skill in service of reconciling nature and um, 
and, and, and human civilization. So I went to look into new technology that I could develop in order for us to live in harmony with nature. So the first invention that I created wasn't textile. It was actually a technology that would protect you from water, allow you to breathe underwater. So it was an artificial gill technology. But the material that we developed was very repellent, and we decided to not use any PFASs for health concern and for scalability. And we developed a technology that was fully waterproof and gas permeable, exactly the type of technology that you need for the outdoor industry. And that's how I ended up, through a series of coincidences, doing what I'm doing in the outdoor textile innovation. But as you may already know, the outdoor textile has a lot of uh, challenges. One of it is the use of PFAS in the textile coating, but also in the membranes. And although these chemicals are really high performance, they're very, very toxic, and they're going to be banned in the major markets soon. The second problem is those textiles are complex and combine different material glue together, so therefore they're impossible to recycle. And at Amfico, these are the two challenges that uh, we are tackling. So we have a no PFAS full textile technology, as well as a fully laminated textile technology, which is designed for recyclability and for circularity. And the approach that we take is very different. So we are able to innovate from the original material, which is a new type of polyolefin material. It's not PP, it's not P, it's a new type of material. And we have the technology to turn that material into the different components that is required to make the final waterproof and breathable textile, which would be finally be used in the, in the textile. So this is an example of that highly water repellent material turned into yarn. And you can see you can produce it in existing large manufacturing capabilities. And we have also the same um, capability in turning those yarn into woven fabric. The interesting thing here is the material itself is already water repellent. So if you weave it, you don't really need any coating. So it's not just only PFAS free, it's, it's free of any coating and we can turn it into a hydrophobic surfaces just like that. And we've been doing also a lot of experiment and work on turning that material into a membrane, which is porous. That allows us to actually fully create a combination of face fabric, but also membrane made from a very unique, super hydrophobic polyolefin material, which has never been used in the industry. And you can actually see also here that the performance of some of the work that we've done on the membrane side in the lab are quite promising. And obviously, these are things that we're still working on as we speak. Therefore, you can see that to be come higher and higher as we progress into a journey in our innovation. One thing, though, that I wanted to also share is that I come from a liquid repellency world. So I just wanted to also share some of the work that we've been able to do on the liquid repellency side. So on that axis, the further down you go, the more difficult it is to repel. And you can see that PTFE works perfectly well. PFAS free porous membrane, not so. And our membrane material technology allow us to do something that is in between. And that's pretty cool because obviously we can't really use any PFAS, but you would want to use something that is closer to the performance of some of the things that you've been using and our technology would allow us. And one of the reasons we've been able to do all of those kind of things at the same time is because we are a unique combination of diverse talent. So I am a material scientist with deep background in coating. We have people who worked in the innovation team in the large sportswear, and we also have like expert in the membrane fabrication side. So our mission at Amfico is to work with you, learn some of the challenges in order to help the outdoor industry go one step further toward a circular future. So from my side, instead of selling you the solution, I'm more interested in learning about your challenges because what I like to do is to think outside of the box and think together on how we could change for a better world. Thank you very much. Can we show our appreciation for Jun? Um,
two things to mention. One, all the presenters are sticking around afterwards. So we are going to take questions, virtual questions as well, so you can ask the entire group of them the same question. But then they will also be available to pick on on a one-to-one -one basis if you want further conversations. But Kim, can I ask you on stage? Kim is from Sympatex. When I joined the outdoor industry 30 years ago, Sympatex was the only name in hydrophilic. They are still leading the way. All yours, Mark Taylor's gonna be doing the slides, aren't you? Mark Taylor is still gonna be doing the slides. Thank you, Mark. So here we go. Get ready to be blown away by Sympatex. My name is Kim Schultz. I'm outdoor enthusiast for quite a while, and I'm a member of the Sympatex crew. For my mindset, I love teaming up, I love sharing solution, and joint energy for the textile industry. So we are not, oh, are you taking the 20 seconds? <laughs> Funny thing. So we are not just a um, textile company. We are Sympatex, and we are here to change the game. We are more than a membrane, and we are your partner for R&D, for service solutions in a pre-competitive value chain. And, of course, we are PFAS free. What makes Sympatex so special? We are not an average material provider. Our products are 100% recyclable, and we are committed to sustainability and to environmental protection. Plus, of course, fully waterproof, highly breathable, and completely windproof. With a unique made with a unique range of materials, we are here to finish, create unique designs. Our commitment to climate change is to make sure that we work with scientists, NGOs, activists, and provi provide support in all possible fields of play. We include ourselves in high political involvement of the textile strategy in our man management board, and all members of Sympatex know about the individual responsibility to change. Because we are the first generation that will not leave a better world for our kids. But we are the first generation that will be able to close the loop. We are designing products that are created, sorry, for reuse, repair, and recycle. That means less waste, less pollution, and a greener, more sustainable future for us all. So let's get creative. To collaboration is key to circular economy. We are a cooperation for everyone, individuals, businesses, and organizations. A little faster than I thought. <laughs> so Sympatex is the ultimate in performance fabrics. Our materials are waterproof, windproof, breathable, and lightweight, and with extremely high abrasions, abras <laughs> abrasions resistance. I'm sorry. So, getting a little faster. We want to leave no traces on the planet that the planet cannot deal with. At the end, it is important to clear goals to minimize footprint before and after production. We collaborate with Microfiber Consortium, Plastic Soup Foundation, Planet Care, and joint projects with Qantas. No to PFAS. This finally being claimed, it's important for all of us to make clear that not the whole outdoor industry should be in focus. There were lots of messages, like from Supertex and others, that eliminated PFAS early enough for more than good reasons. Recycled polyester requires significantly less water during production than new crude oil-based polyester. So the water savings are outstanding at around 90%. Instead of 60 liters water, it is only three liters water which are needed. Sympatex is more than just a company. We are a communi community and a certified leader in sustainability textiles. We are committed to social responsibility and we work with our high standards. Our company structure as well as all materials are certified by independent organizations. So how does our technology work? It's all about the membrane where innovation meets performance. For all our products, we deliver best performance and service solution. So let's deep dive why and what's the difference. It's the homogeneous and pore-free structure. Not pores, but a physical chemical principle. Hydrophilic water-loving molecule chains absorb the water vapor, and the higher the temperature and the humidity difference works, so the more you sweat, the greater becomes the effect. 
It works dynamically and it adapts perfectly to all conditions. Production process with responsibility. We are becoming increasingly independent of fossil raw materials with bio-based and pre-consumer recycling to produce our membrane. Bottles and used textiles are now our source for raw materials. Partners and communities like Accelerating Circularity and Where to Wear are the source for good for us. This is already the summary. We offer high performance products, 100% recyclable PFAS3, and we offer fiber to fiber laminates, minimizing, minima minimizing waste in our production, offering undyed laminates. This is an insight on our value chain because we believe with sustainability, it's the most important process, for example, for research and development guidelines for eco design, production support, quality control, as well as audits and clinics while securing the most possible sustainable value chain. So, innovation meets performance. When we talk on welding and assembly technologies, there is one insight the most important for us. Future revolution, atmospheric by Sympatex. It's a one-piece one 3D booty without cutting, stitching, seeming, fully optimizing your production process. When you choose Sympatex, you're not choosing a high performance material. You're also making a choice for environmental sustainable production and we work together with our customers to create customized solutions. We believe in teaming up and to improve your products. So take a deep breath, join us on our thoughts, get ready for Lisa and for all of us for the question and answer session and feed us with your thoughts. Thank you and back to Charles. Kim, brilliant. Um, we now have a barrage of questions and can I make two calls? Sebastian, thank you for actually putting your name on questions, which means we're gonna prioritize you. But we have very specific questions. So I'd like to call Jun first onto stage. Kim, if you could give him the microphone. Um, Jun, the question is not exactly your category, but you're the best to answer it. I am still concerned about polypropylene olefilic properties. Will this hold up long term with oil from the skin contaminating the membrane? Oh, that goes to export. So can you make the answer and then we will get Henry from export to come on the back of it. Perfect. So I'll answer first. So first of all, we as Amphico, we're not using uh, polypropylene as a material. So um, it's, it doesn't directly apply to our case, but I'm going to answer using my knowledge of materials. So yes, polypropylenes are very oleophilic. Therefore, if you have a porous membrane without any covers, uh, it's likely that it would capture oil into it. Um, the, and I think that's something that is quite, quite difficult to, to change. So there's, there's obviously two solutions to that. One is to use a material that is more repellent toward oil than polypropylene within the polyolefin category, which is something that we're doing. Or the second um, solution to that challenge is to make the whole porous PP easy to wash the oil away. And that's probably innovation on the detergent side that is needed rather than like innovation on the specific membrane side. So answering from uh, my knowledge of materials. Brilliant. William um, or Expo, would you like to take the stage to answer the question. What was the, what was the question again? The question is, I'm still concerned about polypropylene oilophilic membrane properties. Will this hold up long term with oil from the skin contaminating the membrane? Well, there is so always human a, detritus. In yeah, other words. yeah, yeah. There's always uh, oil contamination onto the membrane whatsoever. Uh, but uh, the uh, export membrane uh, is not uh, it's not concerned about this the way we were before with PTFE or oil contamination, if it's about the question. So I would say in the lifetime between eight to 10 years, be before it starts to degrade, the answer is no. Brilliant, I love exact answers. Um, the next question is for Dimpora. William. Uh, uh, Dimpora, 3D membrane, is that the spray one? If so, how do you solve the adhesion? Is it in the membrane or coated onto it? 
So yes, the 3D membrane is in one version, the spray one. Um, the adhesion is actually is special, like the, the big thing to solve. And it's in the structure that we create by spraying it on in the correct pressures and in the correct depth. So you have intrusion of the material into the woven or knitted stru structure in, uh, far enough in so it holds and not too much. So you see it through on the other side. And that's, I mean, engineering and yeah, trial and error in the end to figure this out. I hope this answers the question. Brilliant, thank you, uh, Mario. Um, the next question is for Pertex. Uh, what guides the non-circular cross-section developments is the first part, and is there a process that helps improve the oil resistance of face fabrics without P PFAs? So the, the first one on, on our non-circular cross-section filaments, and this refers to our, what we call our diamond fuse technology. So the filaments, rather than being round like a traditional conventional filament, they're, if you will, diamond shaped. So they, they lock together and create an extremely flat surface, which the, the primary objective is, is increasing abrasion resistance. Because the surface is so flat, the filaments can't be picked out the yarns like they would be on a conventional um, shaped filament yarn. Um, so really the, the primary benefit is the abrasion resistance. And then onto the um, oil resistance of um, non-PFAS um, treated face fabrics. Um, so really the, the, at the moment there's really no way of getting around it from, from, from our point of view is that face fabrics treated with non-PFAS TWRs do not have the same level of oil resistance as those that do. That, the, the, at the moment that's our, our position is that Reproofing and fabric care is, is the, the main way that we get around that and the, the end user education on that space is, is the primary um, thing that we, we should focus on right now. If I could interject, Andy's answering that on behalf of every single converter because we all know oil resistant DWRs are not yet in existence. We're gonna see some early stuff from Patagonia next year. But yeah, good answer. And finally to Kim, um, Kim from Sympatex, really simple question. Kim, you didn't mention anything about solvents. Why not? Do Sympatex use solvents <laughs> in their manufacturing? The answer is pretty short and quite clear, no. I, w I would love to spend more time on stage, but I can't. It's just a no, we are not using it. So that's it. Fantastic. Well, those are all the virtual questions. Have I got any questions from the audience? We can f clip one in quickly. If not, can I ask you all to show your appreciation for all five people from the converters. We're coming off stage for 10 minutes. Um, the good news is, in 10 minutes time, you don't have to listen to me. Um, we have Katie and Marcus. Katie, for those of you who don't know, is another Leeds PhD person. She leads the sustainability program at the European Outdoor Group, the main NGO for this industry. She's working with Marcus on a really big project, which is getting results. So at an early stage, Marcus is better known to work for Gore. So 10 minutes time, Katie and Marcus will be on stage. I have had a preview and I think it's good, but you've got 10 minutes to take a break. <laughs>